Fanatic looking to lock a spot in the legend stage, the final spot in the legend stage, Launders. That is what this one boils down to. Yes. 9Z from 0 3 at the previous major to being on the doorstep of the next stage. And this time, they got that home field advantage. It's so true. You know, I talked about this a million times, but now that there's no more uh, Furia in the room, there's no more Imperial, there's uh, no more 0 0 Nation. They will be sucking up all the energy here, but it doesn't mean that that's going to be enough. Furia, I'm sorry, excuse me, Fnatic are definitely a favorite in this matchup, and that's what's really important. Right now, Krim's getting up into the palace. He'll find Buddha early, and that's a good thing for Krim's. If we go back to just yesterday when they lost two outsiders, what was very much an embarrassing loss, I think, for Fnatic, Krim's had a very tough match. And, you know, this is a guy that we look back at all of his experience, all his accomplishments. We'll see if he can continue to improve. But for now, it's a hold over towards the B site. Fasher's going to drop DGT and QZ up next, and Ooh. it's just instant. Fasher making quick work of the little that was left here of 9Z's T push into the B site. Something back from Max. A chance at a second. Mezzi keeps it clean, and those USPs shoot hot. Yeah, it's sort of a fast reminder of how good this new Fnatic lineup is, of course. Crims is the final kind of remaining ember from this lineup in 2015, and he is... Somebody who you know overall consistency is going to be there. It has been for years. There are ups and downs in between there in pockets. At majors is one where maybe there's a little bit of rust involved. They haven't been at a major in three years, or sorry, three of the previous majors. But just because he had that bad series versus Outsiders, it feels more of an like an aberration than it does something that's going to happen consistently. Oh, so little to work with here, but. Things got a little sketchy. Missed boost. Pistols could have come at them. I like that Fnatic just decided to cancel out and then go deep with the utility damage. So Fasher picks it up. And Fasher already starting to uh, rack up some numbers here. The first Dutch player to be inside the server at a major since Chris J. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of representation in terms of the two teams, in fact, tonight. South America, it's not just about Brazil. Two Uruguayans, a Chilean an Argentinian and a Brazilian. That's what makes up this 9Z team, a real mixed bag. And I think that's just a really cool story. When we talk about the South American region, it's generally just Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. Yes. But and there's many flavors down here. They even managed to squeeze an extra Brazilian on with Zach as the coach. Of course. Right? Um, but you could definitely see NQZ when they were going up against their other South American competition, trying to remind everybody that he is also from this region and wants some respect as well. And I think he's going to get that today for sure. But uh, it's it's this team for me is so much about Max and DGT specifically the the stats that DGT brings them both being from Uruguay and also for Max who is the IGL and a big reason that they get through some of their hardest games. Ooh, all right. Close Crims. Close Crims. Oh, Ooh. the timing is so perfect right there from Crims. Yeah, well done, right? Thought for a second maybe he was going to let that one slide, but no, sir. Mezzi and Crims inside B, holding things back for the time being. Oh, Mezzi. Jesus. That last bullet just magnetized to the head of NQZ, so 3-0 start. Fnatic, it looks good. It does. Now, we have casted all of the most epic 9Z games. Yeah, I've been at every like, single one. I know. I feel like we're the, we're the 9Z casters. Uh, but when we talk about this matchup, it, it feels like, okay, you know, we, we casted the America's RMR, right? So we have rose-tinted glasses for some of the teams that came out of there, how hard they played and how hard those games were and some amazing wins. And that's not to take anything away from it, but Fnatic had to play, got to say, a much harder RMR, right? Uh, Undeniably. Yeah, you know, just a few countries away, but versus all the European teams. And so it is a step up in competition. These few pistols that 9Z can scatter across the map, pressuring into the A site. MP9 nearly gets away from Fasher. Nikodaw is going to slide in with two. Palace Peak shut down. Pistols out. Roy's on that scoreboard. And now Nikodaw's and Roy starting to warm up. They hadn't been given gunfights until now. Yeah. And, uh, 
If you can get a powered up Nikodaz on a CT side, I think you have the winning formula for Fnatic. Yeah, no kidding. And when they played against outsiders, I think one of the great part about their setup is that, you know, it, it's kind of hard to carve your identity out in the top 10 or top 15 in terms of why it should be you winning versus some of these other top teams. And when Fnatic just made this crazy run in the last couple of months, taking a lot of big scalps, it was because they did find a way to play CS a little bit more differently. Tons of off angles will be involved in their CT sides and the way they open up positions by holding aggressively in one spot just to leave Nikodaz in a position to get a really deep angle. It feels like they're hard to hard to figure out their setups and hard to take them apart from that perspective. When they played against Outsiders on uh, Mirage, a huge reason why they lost was actually just like Crims, for example. You know, he just did, he had a really so bad quiet. day. But when he looked at the setups, the setups looked good overall. Nikodaz hit some good shots. Roy was still feel, feeling very confident. And today they look a little sharper. It kind of feels like looking at Cloud9 versus EG versus looking at Cloud9 today. Right. They're just getting better and better. Really kind of warming in, slotting in, and NQZ, welcome to the game. His first kill as he shuts down Roy's flank. That was a lot of info for Fnatic, justified the two-player B-stack. But losing that, with enough time for 9Z to rock the boat either way, makes things curious. Buddha's gonna burn Nikodaz as he brings him with him. And Fasher is low. Oh, but Mezzi gonna go ahead and lock down Catwalk. We get the drop out from Window. Ooh. It's a double from Mezzi. And sometimes with the IGL roll bogging down Mezzi as of late, it's easy to forget this guy was once an absolute star. And now he hits hard. Inside that B site, three kills. And he washes away 9Z's start yeah. for the 5 0. Before his first chance when he got to play on Cloud9. Basically, the reviews from all the people that played with him is this kid is the best player I've ever played with. He's he's the guy who's the most well balanced. He knows all of his utility. He has a smoke lineup for every single angle. He has really great aim. He walks with right click mouse. And I don't understand why. Uh, we can forget about that. We can last forget one. about that. But you know what? You've got to accept the bad with the good. And if that's the bad, then we're feeling pretty good about Mezzi. We'll forgive him. Yeah, but we won't forget. 9Z in with a half buy. Galil on DGT. There's enough util here to maybe blank it out the site. They're going to go forward. Nice timing on that. I do like it. They put out the incendiary. They charge right through. And look what it nets them. There's no defense committed to within the bomb site, But we do already have three members of Fnatic trying to get up Catwalk. So why not go for the box boost first? See if you can get those prying eyes in. Nothing will be shown from 9Z. So a very curious situation where Fnatic could take a bit of a chance here and try to run this retake. Yeah, Roy's kit is going to be very important here because he has the damage grenades. The smokes will be meaningful, but they've got to flush people out of positions. That's a nice start. NQZ, the one player able to peek and shave one off already. Fasher, what a turn. And Roy, he's going to get maxed out of the apartments. This one's going to come down to the crunch. Final few seconds to spare. Ops backing up. And what do you know? 9Z pressing into that bomb site. They'll lose everything they invest, but they walk away with the round. I'm almost positive that this is a full rifle round both ways. Fnatic save if 9Z don't make some kind of blatant error in that post plant because you lose the B site because you didn't play inside of it. And the reason they didn't is because they decided to go for mid control fast. This might have been a misread of the money, for example, but they should have known since it was five straight that there were either going to be a half buy or no buy at all, which means you want to have an anchor. Normally, if, if you know this is coming, you don't play two on cat. You play one bench, you play one uh, in market, something passive, but something within the site to stop them as they come out. And we see what too much control can do. Ooh, Nikodaz, though. He's going to crack the whip into the A ramp. Oh, I wonder if NQZ saw this cross. I'm sure they're going to try to punish it if they did, and he's been holding on to this angle, but it's Mezzi who crossed up actually with an op. Man, the double op here from uh, Fnatic. I feel like I would absolutely rather be the CT here. It just comes down to whether or not he wants to move. Might get a jump across. Player peek behind before the op moves in. No, oh. it's David to go right into the angle. Gets slapped back. Yeah, that With was, that, it's like the warning sign here for the CTs on B. Yeah, that was such a deep position for Mezzi to be in. Um, and of course, the second off is just brutal. 9Z lost every single player last round. So anything that made that a bonus with some it left over in the reserves, that's all gone now. Yeah, they've had to basically take out a loan to put together a buy and... Debt collector's coming. Yeah, debt collector is coming. He'll break your legs. They really go above and beyond. Yeah, you know. It's called passion, yeah. you know? It's a, it's a career choice. Max, he's inside connector. 
There's still maybe a little life left on this. Again, huge risk, right? Talking about the economic problems that come with a loss. But with an entry, the hopes are still alive. The dream is still ticking, and Fasher comes kicking through the con side. He's going to get bombed down into the fire. He's going to be able to lock into this corner as well. Nothing NQZ can do. So you'd think, man, I'd love to save this off. However, now surrounded. Worst case scenario here, he dies in 10 seconds. But uh. Nikodaz puts an end to him. 6-1 for Fnatic. And despite that one problem of not having a B anchor in the round prior, yeah. this has been a flawless start. Yeah, yeah, maybe just a, you know, a small misplay by starting out with mid control when you don't really need it versus pistols in that situation. But outside of that, it has been nothing but wins here for Fnatic. And they can even go back to a setup like that. It'd be kind of unlikely to think that 9Z would go into a full B hit. Uh, again, however, this time it actually, it will be with pistols, so maybe Max will keep that in the back pocket. And by the way he frags, you would never think he's the IGL of the team. And I, I honestly, he is one of the core riflers of the roster on top of making all the calls. Nothing but positive things to say about Max as an up-and-coming IGL out of a region that just doesn't have any others that we talk about. And Zach, of course, standing behind them, former Immortals coach. He has absolutely been around the block. And I remember doing an interview with him when I worked back at Yahoo Esports in 2017, and he said that, you know, he always, he believes he's the best coach. He says, no one else does it like I do it. And you talk to him, and he's super humble normally. Sure. But when it came to coaching, he felt very impassioned about that fact. And uh, I think he's shown with a roster of players that nobody has heard of mm -hmm. that they really are a threat to international competition. And it's pretty exciting to watch. Yeah, well, you know, that's what we all want is for teams from different countries, smaller countries, to be viable on the world stage. You know, you think about players who don't really come from countries with predecessors. You know, you're really digging through and coming up with what could be gold. Like the UK. We got Mezzi. Yeah, imagine that. It's a good egg, that one. Could be coming home. Molotov goes deep onto the ramp. It's going to flush 9Z into Fasher. He's just kept himself tucked in. Element of surprise now gone, but great cover from above. Nikodaz just pulls them apart and pulls them into that A site. Nothing yeah. here for 9Z. Not a thing. Yeah, there's a lot of variety when it comes to setups. They're going to have a deep enough playbook to carry them through this first 15 rounds. It will be more than difficult for 9Z to find a really easily exploitable weakness in terms of, I would say the hard part is trying to condition Fnatic. And I think on the T side, when we saw them play on Overpass, for example, uh, you could see that some of their defaults were lacking a little bit. And I'm going to assume that just wasn't their best self. Um, we, of course, didn't get to watch a lot of their games because they were playing over in a simultaneous European RMR. But based on every single team they played, that was a top team phase Navi Vitality. Even if they lost, they always took a map. And even that alone is pretty impressive on top of a lot of their BO1 victories. I think the only thing as of late that is kind of this big question mark is that blowout versus outsiders on overpass. Barring that 16-1, you know, there was no there was no indication that Fnatic were gonna stumble up that badly. So we'll see if they can just kind of wipe that off the off the slate. And then talking about the rest of the roster, you know, we don't need to worry about Crims at a major. We don't even need to worry about Nikodaz at a major. Roy, they made top eight. At yes. Antwerp, they, they kind of have earned their stripes in that regard. But Messi, as the IGL, he has every right to be a little bit nervous. High pressure match. And if your IGL is nervous, even if you have great players, that can kind of yeah, that have a triple out. down effect, right? Sure. That it sure does. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like that's the case today. Look at this, the confidence already from Fasher. You know, he is again, right? The one piece that could be shaky. 13 and two starting here on Mirage. Mezzi swinging the AWP, drops two bodies, bottom con. Great awareness. And it is just, again, yeah, awareness, right? Ready for everything whenever it comes at them. 9Z, I feel like right now, they can't even contain this CT side from Fnatic. Yeah, and they're trying to play fast, and they're trying to play active, and they're trying a few different things. They're just getting cut off at the pass almost every single time. So two players left alive in uh, with 20, 25 seconds left. And I know that also they try to stretch mid rounds as thin as possible. That's the other exciting part about watching 9Z. When we watched their qualification game at Antwerp, and they you know closed it out on dust too. I think it was versus Pain. Very heated matchup. It was rounds that went down 4v5, they still won. You know, they did that consistently because I think they like to break out of theory in the 5v5 and those setups and make it all about improvising. And in those situations, I think they really show their range. They really show how smart they can be. They really show how much they believe in themselves. And they're also a team that makes great comebacks. So if you're sure. watching right now, that's something that should hook you in. 9Z, they still think they can win this map. And I think that's one of the most fun parts about watching them. 
the belief is there, but to be honest, right, remember one round the anomaly from 9Z comes by way of that misposition Fnatic setup, we'll call it. And even then, every single player died post-plant. But this time, it's going to be quick. DGT already looking to test it. They're going to go back into that B hit. And it's Roy behind Arch. Nikodaz, eyes in middle. Nikodaz has been really active. you got to appreciate the amount of positions that he's played so far. Ooh, ooh. There it is. That's a good find. Good flash from NQZ. Gets DGT active. Now Mezzi. He's floating around while Crims, of course, still sits on that B site. But Crims isn't the kind of guy to panic. He's not going to force you to over-rotate. But as he suddenly finds himself set on fire, Nikodaz knows that mid was compromised. Crims, yeah, he's going to need some assistance here. So Mezzi starts to come over. They're going to be occupied with apartments. There's already a player on the front side of sight, and that is Buddha. He catches Crims with a headshot. We've got both these ops trying to scour the site, but nobody's giving angles. Nikodaz decides to go in and take one on his own damn terms. And in doing so, starts to unravel all this. He gets past the windowsill, catches Ooh. DGT deep over towards the arch side, and now he hunts the window player, but Max is still front sight. Max catches Mezzi, Nikodaz slides between, and we've got 9Z back with a round That's win. That's right, talk to him, Max, leading from the front. Some really great rifle frags there. Good positioning, good awareness. I mean, he couldn't see Nikodaz as Nikodaz was so actively hunting his position down, and yet he was able to avoid him entirely, still find these other fights. And this was a real battle of the minds here, of course. We know it's all about lock-offs when it comes to attacking the B side. Getting into the, uh, getting into the window and holding down market is the first step. Anybody who's past that point when the exec comes out, they're free to roam a little bit, and that's what Nikodaz was doing. But Fnatic were very careful about not giving up a kill until some action happened, and here we are. Already into round 11, halfway up the A site. Roy's gonna, ooh, I was gonna say force his way through, but he holds back, at least just for the second. Mezzi comes in with a kill on Jesus. Fasher, and we've got Max, the only player up, oh. tapped back by Fasher. And just like that last time 9Z put a round up, it just gets deleted. You'd almost forget about their success by how damning the follow up is from Fnatic. Yeah, and honestly, it takes a lot of balls to go for a fast rat, like right after that round win. I mean, you could be rattled, but now that you've lost that, you're kind of back to square one. And you'll always think on a fast rat if you get melted down that quickly, oh, we could have tried to draw out a default and do some damage to the economy while also having a chance to win the round. And now they kind of feel like, well, we just got multi-frag on an A hit that just didn't work this time. And that can be kind of depressing. So 9Z with no money left over and this half kind of closing in around them. We'll see off the T timeout what they can do. You can see a very kind of emphatic Zach behind them trying to inspire some confidence. And uh, with that Immortals lineup, you know, he has found himself in a major final before as well. So that's the kind of experience that can make you believe. If he says something, even if he's lying, it might be what you need to hear. I would, be a, I would believe a liar who won the major. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. or made a final. Give the benefit of the doubt. Yes. Sometimes lies are necessary. Right now, 9Z need to be told that uh, this one's still in their control. Three players to face up Khan, but Smoke allows the cross first. And we look again at these incredibly active positions. Like, this is new. Yeah, Fasher is just coming through, pushing down. Mid control is being taken. We're getting too many picks, though, with these ops. And now, at least because they won that one round, Mezzi's not gone back into it, so they've just got to worry about Nikodaz. Oh, oh, Fasher, though, going to continue to tear them up as he has 17 and 3 in the first 12 rounds. And then Nikodaz is always good for that one towards ramp, it seems. David will give him that. Cracks Crims, oh. and DGT managed to push his way through, but remember, he only has two health, right? So he has to keep it clean. And Mezzi, he gets that one bullet in, the one golden shot to just take all the hope back out of the 9Z sails. Yeah, David, looks... this is interesting. Grabs the M4, finds what should be, yes sir, the freebie. Little wall bang on that. David then makes the jump over. Timing here could catch the B player off guard. And don't forget, he's got the bomb. If he can get this kill towards B, then David is absolutely on for the one versus three. Oh. But of course, it's Nika Dawes. Yes. He peeks his out through connector, catches him up on catwalk. Double digits, Fnatic. I mean, look at the amount of kills right now. Fasher with 17, Nikodaz right on his tail with 16. Mezzi closely behind as a B player with 12 frags. Everybody is chipping in at the moment. And we talk about this team with Roy as the most kind of powerful positions on the roster and uh, the hard carry in a lot of their big games. And he only has six frags and they don't even really need them. 
Plus, he's scared of vegetables. And fruits. A lot of weirdos on this roster. Yeah, but you know what? One unverified, one scared of vegetables, one walks with right click. <laughs> Crimson's is bald. <laughs> Just a bunch of freaks. But luckily, this is CS. We all get weird. Nikodaw's going to go down. 16 and 3 with that death. What a half he is having. Little op dominance. And, you know, this wouldn't be the first map that NQZ kind of gets, kind of gets, uh, well, outdone, we'll put it. Had a slower start when they first played on stage. Well, what's happened here, though? <laughs> Nikodaz dies. All right, we're all going B. Looks like they're, so all they're going to try to do is just push, take a risk and push, take cat control. This could be an interesting adjustment. This is one where if 9Z take too much time, then Fnatic get to eat their, have their cake and eat it too, in the sense of leaving the A side open, but still being in time to defend it while clearing out the entirety of the B side. Look, now the full flank can potentially come around. Now the only thing is, this. Oh, oh, Max was hunting back into underpass to just see if that option was there. They could still just follow through though. No need to complicate the problem. 9Z, A site looking nice and prime for the taking. It's Buddha versus Fasher on the side of Connector, but they've given time for Crims to set up over on Cat. So from a distance, he lends that helping hand. Roy's gonna follow through, slides into the site, but DGT comes out and gets him. We've got a man advantage, 9Z, a chance to finally put a third one up, and Mezzi goes down. So there we go. It's enough to just keep that hope alive. Look how many flashes came over top of the staircase. They layered those so kind of stubbornly to make sure whoever was there was blind, or that once it felt like the flashes were finished, that they would finally come to, sitting there waiting for their duel that was out in the open. No, a third flash came over. They got that stairs kill. Now there was one on Cat to provide good cover, and that has the thing. The Think that has been the thing about Fnatic. They've had more than one person watching the same position, and that kind of coverage has resulted in a lot of their easiest rounds. But finally, it catches up with them. 9Z pull one out, picking the correct site, mid-rounding well, and keeping their wits about them, even though they found an empty site, right? Making sure not to just simply cross, get that bomb down, going to some regular post plan. It got scary when Max died, but they held it together. Holding it together and hanging on. That kind of feels like the trend of this half. You know, props to 9Z keeping it varied, right? We talk about the different looks these rounds have had, despite most of the results being Fnatic racking them up. Oh, I mean, this round could result in a 12-3. We look at a Galil here from 9Z. Everyone's money's very low. Lots of pressure here. Not ideal. In round 14. Going to go back into that mid-emphasis. Bomb sits back in B with Buddha up ahead of it. We've seen a good B split come by way of a kill on Crims the first. And here we go. Max headhunting, but met by fire. So they're going to have to get stalled out. This could set up Roy. We talk about how he hasn't had to really hit hard just yet, but now that could have been his moment. David's going to catch him on the turn. Nikodaz point blank finding the window lurk. And Max isn't going to get up into any trouble this round. Mezzi, inside sight, waits again with Krim still towards Arch. They're they, still, they know this pressure is coming. Yeah, and there's still a late cat hit that can get involved as well. Krim's is kind of safe for that, but let's see once he gets spotted. Ooh, tucks in. It's gonna give him another few feet to work forward. Mezzi, now, They're now he timings. could get blindsided. Sees the player drop, oh. still wins the duel. It's only 12 health. Crims is up next, catches the push, bomb goes down, and now it's desperation. NQZ finds the first and saw that face of Mezzi. David comes in with the trade, and this 2v4 gets evened out. We've got a player towards the back door sliding in. It's Fasher, and we know what he's done already. Easy pickup onto the offer. David's turn, but he goes down, and Fasher simply won't stop. Yeah, he's having a statement game right now. 19 frags. This one will be a reference, and it's, again, the most high-pressure situation in the 2-2 matchup. Feels like every kill is worth two for the resume in a game like this. On to round 15, 9Z looking for four, and they actually do string together a pretty competent buy. I mean, they've got multiple AKs here, just no off. That's the one big concession. But they couldn't figure out how to change the positions of the two players who are within the site there. Crims was just left untested, and even though they left some gaps, they kept getting tunnel visioned on the other guy. Roy is looking to slide through. Oh, sees the legs of Max. Fasher again! 21. Doesn't matter where he is, 
turns it 90 degrees, snaps down onto the ramp. Nikodaz can worry about Palace, and Fasher's even going to find a chance to just walk this one back. Yeah, now he can get to an even stronger spot with no punish here, and it's true. They couldn't have just walked out of Palace. There would have been another CT, Nikodaz covering him so damn well all game. Another 2v4 attempt. Max already spotted at the top of mid, so they know that there's something in transition. It's the bomb that gets shown as well, so it could create a bigger question mark. Poor NQZ just looking to slide out, and even with the lesser health, that's a hell of a headshot. Now they just close in on him, though. In Tetris is not a fun spot. Crimson will take him out. Max down, 1v3. Down to Max. Down a young Max here. I've seen him put up the numbers, but it's been all of 9Z that kind of gets snubbed out of this half. They're going to figure out where he is. He could slide under the off as Nikodaz gets pressured back into the jungle. Ticket player yet to peak. That's Crims back at a distance. More of Max's health shaved low. And now that clock also starts to work against him. He knows at least where two CTs are. But these are going to have to be the sickest headshots that you have ever seen. And as he comes through first, Nikodaz does get dropped. Max only on 10. Every step, it felt as though it's simply too much to ask of him. Crims, all you have to do is peek, but now that gun's back out, and Max has the smallest, slimmest chance at this clutch. Oh, he's floating, but he's safe from, tri from triple right now. <gasps> oh, oh, but Mezzi's gonna find him, and there for Fnatic. Sure enough, playing numbers round after round, a bounce back from the beating that outsiders gave them. And they never looked like they were playing without confidence. They kept trying to do things every single round. It's just they got hard stops, you know, the top frag on the team, nine kills in max, and uh, right now at least they get CT side to look forward to, but this is of course their map pick, and Fnatic are having a great time. Wouldn't be the m first massive CT side comeback we got today. Cloud9, the champions of that, right before this series gets started, 9Z need to be inspired by it, because three rounds all of a sudden, this pistol feels like it is everything. Yeah. A little fired up after that spanking from outsiders. <laughs> looking a little bit. And that's kind of that That energy is kind of what we saw with Cloud9 as well. Sure. Not the same team on days one and two as three and four. Just given a chance to power up. Yeah. You know, that is the criticism of the two best of ones, right? One day decides if you're two thirds of the way to elimination or the legend stage. C9 missed their stride, but David sure won't. Two bullets out of the Berettas, and Roy gets dropped as he looked to face up ramp. Now, that bomb is actually jumping its way through window. There's a duel between DGT and Nikodaz that just gave that bomb over to the side of the CTs. Crims is the only one to do anything here for Fnatic. So even though they only got those three T rounds, it looks like 9Z are going to extend play here on Mirage. Crims dropped. And a little life throughout the crowd will bode well for 9Z. And th this crowd has been witness to some fantastic comebacks all event long. So I'm sure they're believing and holding their nerve and waiting to see what can come of this pistol round win. But a great shot from David to set the tone, followed by some excellent shots from everyone thereafter. And now it will be a Fnatic with no money. Looking to QB sneak. Four in Palace, bomb top mid. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, David playing triple box. There's the bomb. And there's the pack of players that should get finished off. All good. Max comes in with the Fomus. It is Nikodaz left over. Come on, get David. He's got one HP. The block would have been enough. Maybe there's some thought there to have the bomb go out mid. Because I can't see a world where Mezzi doesn't think he's going to die from one million angles. But maybe if you don't think, let's say your goal isn't to plant the bomb for once. You haven't invested anything. So sure. then if you have the bomb go out mid, you could reasonably say CTs will organize around it, holding on to it. And that gives you actually a chance from some random vantage point to get some like, like unlucky or lucky kills, I should say. And they know also that 9Z would have invested pretty heavily. No bomb planted on the first round. Yeah. I'm only giving Mezzi some, Mezzi some credit because he came up with that boost sure. on uh, Inferno. Yes. Inside of It's unorthodox. Evo. Yeah, he's, he's been thinking outside the box. Method to Fnatic's madness. Ooh, nice nade from DGT. Hones in on Nikodaz. So first gun round from Fnatic. 
they're going to have to be playing off the 4v5. Fasher has been an absolute animal so far on this first map, but it's DGT with another chance to shine. Mid gets shut down just as easily as the ramp. Fasher finally gets a chance to activate, but nothing seems to go swimmingly for Fnatic, and Crims is going to be left all alone. 9Z, this is what you need. Not only win pistol, convert clean, get that first gun round down, but do it with a bunch of bodies up. The free AKs are coming. You know, we are still in baby's first steps of a comeback, but it's walking. Yeah, it is walking. It is walking, and that was a very clean round. I mean, Fnatic, they just want to get like a couple of kills here in this situation. Didn't really come close to it. Fighting on the outside of a smoke. The only nice thing that happened was Fasher's kind of kill on David outside of that. It's all money for 9Z. Into a half buy, Tech Nines, and again, to give credit to Mezzi, I think he's had given a lot of unique thought to rounds like this. Pistols, half buys. So let's see what the idea is. Buddha. Take that nade back out. That's the big one. No early damage. So they're going to press in close. Buddha's got support, but still found out in the open. And NQZ, well, he's going to keep on tapping. Makes it nice and easy. Fasher and Nikodaz down without a fight. Roy to 32 health will answer. This is a 1v3 with a huge health disadvantage. But DGT slide now. And sure enough, Roy's not ready for that one. So now within five. Yeah. 9Z. It's not just one gun round they win. They get through those half buys. And now it feels like anything is possible. Absolutely. And it makes up for some of the damage uh, that wasn't done that previous round to grab these three kills for Fnatic. But that's not all they need. The banks are starting to be built up here. The crowd is at its maximum. Decibel. Decibels. The max decibels. They're basically a fighter jet at the moment. The amount of noise that is being made. And it's only after the game we realize how loud we had to talk the entire time. Yeah, I just no to be idea. able to hear ourselves. This uh, whole building is so alive all day long. It's very, it's amazing. It's amazing. It really is. Day four, by the way. Day four, by the way. Ooh, nice Roy. shot, Roy. Oh, oh nice. God. The wall bang. Nika does. Little style on that one sprinkled in and just. Oh, sorry. I don't hear anything anymore. Yeah. Three kills oh. just like that, and this place oh. is silent. Oh. It's that library we heard about. I gotta say, those ones come in quick. But even when it's quiet, there's still <laughs> there's still noise. That was a beautiful play. I mean, overall, first of all, first shot makes it a lot easier for other CTs to make some mistakes. So, gotta give credit to Roy for that quick one outside of mid. But then coming over top of the balcony, letting one run by, and then having one spam where you would stand to see up the ladder. I mean, yeah, really cool. Really thinking there. Just in case. So it means that even if, if there's no one there, he can run across that balcony, never has to worry about bottom of ladder. Yep. Allows for him to just fixate on the site. It's kind of, when it's always a good option, that's how you know it's a great idea. And it's third player in, right? So it's not as though you're leaving anybody without support. It's just a what-if situation. Oh, and the knife's coming out. No. Oh, he's, oh! oh. Crims, he was so close. One right click away. So close. All right. Lands walking away with some scars, but uh, at least 9Z's heart's still beating. But with the off carry forward, that's an off that they wouldn't have had. So this could mean a lot. So sick. Yeah. Cerebral from Nikodaz. Almost every bullet hits here. Check and the health. Let's see. Buddha doesn't even move. Doesn't even. Ooh, he even gave him his back. Doesn't even react. Ooh, it's cost. <laughs> he wants it. Okay, you said it in Swedish. <laughs> it's been a while since Crims has gotten a knife at a major. Yeah. Yeah, back on Fnatic was like every day. And he was only like the third best at doing it. <laughs> and it's a hell of a high. It's been a great show. And it's not even one third done. Will be after this game finishes, however. Yes, final spot in the legend stage to be secured by Fnatic or 9Z. Here we go, back to middle. Back to middle for the AWP in this position, but the full A attack, it looks like, is going to come on in a few seconds. Do they want to walk out into this? They heard the AWP shot inside a window. Deagle and spawn. 
And I think the Deagle jump spotting did get some information. Ooh, but Molly pressure oh, and that flash. flash. Nice. Wow. Oh, but NQZ with the collateral. And David catches the Fasher. Oh, Buddha off of the catwalk. He's going to keep it alive. Crims, you want a knife? How about a clutch? I bet it feels even better. David slides in. Easy pickup. Very little left of him. Bomb can be grabbed, and Crims could depart. Could, but won't. At first, he wants to face. And those CTs are going to keep this shoulder to shoulder, putting themselves in a spot to be sprayed. Crims goes over, and Max, because he is that close, it's a quick, efficient trade, and an eighth for nine Z. Yeah, excellent spacing and surviving the cat trade was the big one. That tips the scales in the end round. And now it's nine Z. They've closed it to a five-round game. They're making this possible. NQZ with the collat as well helps out a ton, makes up for the fact that they've got a Deagle sitting in spawn, just trying to find what he can find. And they'll take any kind of round. They don't care if it's just a clutch. It's an AWP in spawn right now for 9Z. An extra one on the ground. See if it has any importance here in round 22. Nikodaz looking for the sniper challenge. That is interesting. Oh, yeah, that, that is interesting. They leave a whole op there, not deciding to double op. And QZ towards Ticket now, so if Nikodaz wanted that duel, it gets put into position, but he will fall back. Yeah, this is Buddha in a position where he definitely could have used an op, an MP9 on the B apartments. You know, Buddha fills an interesting role for this roster, replaced Rox, who at the last major cycle was a clear underperformer for this 9Z team. So it's not as though Buddha has to put up big ones, but 5 and 17 at the moment. Uh oh. If 9Z are going to keep up. You'd think maybe he has to slot in. Oh, they drew attention for this underpass play, and Messi's found a huge timing. Yeah. Getting David killed is a big one. Messi oh, finds that timing onto Max. The cat player could be crucial. DGT's fixated on connector, but there's oh. this problem for him. Roy slides out. We've got a five versus two from Fnatic as they meticulously work their way from all different directions. Buddha's MP9 will prevail, but it also creates this pocket within the A site for Fnatic to easily press in. It's low health for the two remaining players, and it feels like 9Z need to allow this 14th to slide forward. Again, we're talking such little margin of error because of the first half that a round like this could be soul-crushing. Yeah, that's a tough one, too, because it was the right setup until they moved. All they did was bite on a bait and allow Mezzi to have free roam from the underpass. Once he got out, he got the first kill. Things got really hairy. And there was a lack of awareness in the cat position about how much of his body could have been showing. Didn't have any idea someone could be up there on cat as well. So even though they just had two players dedicated watching mid, they let go of Mezzi and underpass and someone walking all the way up cat. Made it look like he ran there. They're also doing a good job of identifying that David, he has he's had a habit of being, uh, uh, you know, on balk, under balk, whatever the case may be, and they've been playing in Palace consistently. That could really suck the life out of the room here. 9Z, they have an op once again. They're putting everything into this corner. All right. You know, this is to defend against Matt Point. Never fun Look to hear best. that sound every single round, so. And QZ. Gonna have to take up the reins of round 23. Needs to be the leader. And he's just gonna get completely blindsided by Roy. Did Roy have vision? Yeah, okay. Yeah, they just swung on him. Sure, no support for it. Now suddenly DGT is kind of like the best. The up next. Yeah, and they it's may still not tough have, stuff. May not have even known that he had an op on this round and decided to scrim mid. NQC may be hoping they thought he had an op so that he could take an aggressive position like that and have a few seconds to buy. But really four, four CT rounds at the start of this one straight. We've had four back and forth rounds as well. But this is the buy that N9Z have just tried to avoid. There's nowhere to run and hide now. Famas, MP9, double deagle. There's a smoke grenade over on Buddha, but there's nobody inside that B site. If they could win fights in middle first, then maybe a retake opens up. There's one kid, of course, on Buddha as well, so his death could be important. Where's it all get dropped? David, he catches a deagle kill. Nikodaz, in the meanwhile, he's gonna find himself a double, and David gets just oh. blindsided and pinched upon within this B site. It's seven map points for Fnatic These are... on the choice of 9Z. Yes, their, their map pick as well, and yeah, that's the problem with this veto. I mean, they took out Dust2, which is the map that 9Z have had some Love of it. our historic victories on, and uh, Fnatic 
They do a good job here. They've called some really good rounds recently. This one, they get all the attention drawn to mid. So much information gained from just that bench peak alone. And then they knew to pull the pin on the B play. They even smoked their own molly so they can get out faster. And then they scale onto the site. If there were better guns, there were a couple of small moments there where things could have gone haywire. But they were narrowly avoided by Fnatic. And they don't have to think about that, that anymore. Three, no, four. Four MP9s near non-existent utility, and a patient Mezzi will get that 5v4. They tried their absolute damnedest at the start of this half, thought maybe changing sides could reinvigorate their chances, but maybe it's DGT who's gonna have to take it all. A deep peek into the ramp, a smoke towards Palace, and Max, critical kill. Now these are upgrades, at least one free one. An AK grab by Max, man advantage currently held on to, and NQZ, He's calling that mid is currently under pressure. Roy, he's going to walk right into that crosshair. And so it's a 2v4 from the English in-game leader and the Danish op. Mezzi drops utility, caught by the 5-7, wounded now. 28 health if he wants to pinch into B, but they don't know about where the bomb is at. They could only guess it is apartments. It somehow feels like they, they have a chance. I mean, they got info on a couple of guys at mid, DGT. He needs to be the beginning and end now. MP9 here at the van. Yep, excellent. Goes unchecked. Easy does it. Bomb goes down. And now Mezzi, not left. It's a double from DGT in the back site. 9Z with the much lesser weapons will continue their hopes and dreams. It seemed like no chance after that B push got held. An unanswered frag there. And then the push on A ramp didn't work out until the re-aggro came and the MP9 dropped another AK. Then the upgrade started pouring in, and they did a good job of maintaining info, but not actually dying. They got spotted by Mezzi inside a connector, and QZ gets this kill. And so, again, a lot of their proactivity has been paying off. 9Z might be losing, but you can't say it's because they're playing scared. Each of them putting up numbers, but... With Fasher in this current form, Nikodaz and Mezzi not far behind him, it does just feel like all it's going to take is one more big heroic. We had it on so many CT rounds from Fnatic, so many multiple kills off of Fasher. Yeah. A site, B site doesn't matter. Put him in the pocket, and he's going to grab yeah. as many frags as he damn well he's pleases. He's defaulting Palace. You better believe he's going to get one more kill from that spot, and sometimes that could be the only kill you need. So let's see it. He's been a very kind of dangerous, aggressive lurker on the roster on this map. Long play, Max. Whoa, whoa, Max. Oh, it's smoked. Yeah, he's, he's good for some time, but the thing is, his position in mid right now, it's it's not really, it's not, it's not adding or taking away from the round. They're still kind of very vanilla when everything, all the dust settles. DGT kind of has to be able to get back in time, and he's starting to get away from his post a little bit. We don't know if the idea from, it seems like the idea from Fnatic is simply wait and then exec, but look, the underpass crawl actually starts coming out. So maybe this mid control early on is gonna oh. pay off, but DGT leaves his post. He gives it up. Yeah, it looks like they put a little pressure on B, dragged him away. He's gonna come, oh, oh my God. twice, twice, two potential moments. They're still selling fakes. They're still selling fakes on B. They're allowing this walk up to take place. And, oh. and he goes down, oh my God, this call is insane. Meanwhile, we do have that top mid push, but it's being watched by Nikodos. For a second, he looked at his teammate's screen and he can't react fast enough. Max comes through with what could be, could be the recovery. Because Lord knows that the cat play could have been critical. Crimson Roy gonna find two more kills. They're low health though. This is again doable for 9Z. 30 seconds. Oh, they want to hold on to the site, but the bomb has to get recollected. And now Fasher has a new job. He's got to delay long enough. He's alive. They can get across. These smokes are here. They've got a molly inside of the palace, inside of uh, the jungle, and they're forcing a big rotation. Late con smoke comes up. Oh, actually, it's in he the knows. jungle. Fasher has to fight, but he knows now where both players were. These are those kinds of moments that Fasher's going to deliver. Eight seconds. He's going to have to cover that plant. So, sure enough, CTP comes through. Roy doesn't have the health for this. And 9Z. How many moments did they miss in that round, wow. and yet still in the end they recover? Yeah, they're comfortable with the kind of very fast and uh, atypical aggressive plays coming out of Fnatic. The call looks so good, the way they spread the map, the way they pulled DGT off his post two, three times. The opera died on triple with no answer back, and DGT is like scratching his head. Man, there's so much pressure coming into B. He's trying to listen to the comms, but also trust himself, and so he keeps fighting with this idea of peeking down in the mid or going back to help his friend. He picks the wrong option, and then they still end up winning. Fnatic on pistols. 
fruits of their labor. 9Z, this should go down smooth. Utility's already starting to rain over, and Fasher's gonna go over top of the staircase. Oh boy. Now he's in a dangerous spot. David oh, almost gets away from him, but he'll catch Mezzi and the bomb goes down. Gun's empty. Uh -oh. Roy's gonna activate. In with the Deagle. The M4 gets picked up, but it's empty, and the pistol gets shut down. Nicely done here from 9Z. It's a little chaotic moment here. Pressure applied, but all good for 9Z. The South Americans within four of overtime. Yes. I interviewed that man actually earlier and uh, with the twirly mustache. And he said he was super nervous about this game and he knows and respects Fnatic. I would expect nothing less but that kind of courtesy from a 9Z fan. You know they're good guys. But he still believed, of course, that 9Z could do it. I asked him for his truly most honest opinion on it. And you know, as they fight until the very end, they're not a team on everyone's radar, but some of us were aware. They limped into this stage. You know, they look like a shell of themselves oh. as they started the event, and now uh -oh. just a shell is all they have in round 27. Crimson Fasher out the gate. And at the bottom of middle, Max will hold on. He's not alone. Oh, this is tough. All the resources right now. They've got two and another. No control. Follow. <gasps> oh, but Yon that is still sitting here. Interesting. The We've paw. got tons of utility, but they are all on the other side oh. of the map as an A plant comes through. There can be no time wasted. They need to sprint the distance into this retake and then hope that two connector, or excuse me, one can work his way out. The flash out from jungle. It's Buddha on his own on oh. one end. Deep CT position. And the hopes of the 9Z fans on this retake, but by the time they arrive, the bomb is beyond the halfway point. This is so incredibly desperate that it's gonna have to take instantaneous kills. Knives out from Mezzi. Inside the smoke, he's lost. And there's not gonna be a defuse here. No how, no way, no sir. Fnatic. Go rounds, pistol rounds, they're giving it a lot of thought. They win 70% of their pistol rounds on Nuke, and this is Damn. over a pretty big sample size. And that's also the kind of round right now that could absolutely make the difference in this game. So we'll see if they can pull off the hold. 9Z are not too bad themselves. It's going to be a full-blown exec into the A site. Three players priming for the hut. Mezzi to be tested. His medal is sitting in the back site. Buddha slides through. NQZ connects. Roy comes out from mini and will only get the one. So 9Z, man advantage. And all that Fnatic have left is the heavens. They fight out, and the first goes down. No trade back from Crims. And he's got two players down beneath, one fighting out from Hut. And Crims, what a difficult job this is. 70%, but not here tonight. Unless, unless, Crims can finish off the little that's left of DGT and the player down beneath him. The man towards squeaky jump spots. And Crims waits for a chance to strike. The bullet whizzes by, a warning sign of what's to come. It's a little more impact, but that's okay. all it is. It's an impact, not a round win. 9Z find 11. This would be their biggest nuke win if 9Z are able to pull it off and close out on T-side. And this is the exact start you need. They had enough players upstairs to pull this hold off, but they didn't have the aim. They got out dueled on every single peak with DGT's 2K. They kept tipping the scales back in their favor. Man advantage situations all the way until the end with a bomb plant, a very nice round to start off the second half. And this is Fnatic's map pick. Fnatic come in with the force, triple pistols, MP9 and Scout. But that MP9's in a big position, safe from the fire. Mezzi's gonna get the opener. We've got two T's just stranded outside the door and it's a dink in versus NQZ. Mezzi primed to finish somebody off. Do they know about oh, this another gap? bad smoke? And they're, oh god! Are they going to drop vents? Because they still they could do that, but they're a little scared about it. So now they wrote back over to ramp, and Nikodaz CTs are meeting him here. He's gonna he's gonna hit a couple. Nikodaz goes out, gets tagged to 56. Crims will sit and wait, and he does not have to make his move. Okay, there's still time on the clock here. It's about 9Z not getting worried, but at the same time, the CTs are in pretty much the prime optimal positions. Oh, God. And they don't know about Crims at all. The little that's left of NQZ, Nikodaz comes back at it. Second player tagged, and that's all. But oh. now if they move forward, Crims is not a problem. If they come back, he could be everything for Fnatic. Oh, they watch it. Heads up play from 9Z. Now they know he's here. And Crims, from what could have been what? to what shouldn't be, 
He still hangs on and finishes David. DGT alleviates the pressure elsewhere. Roy nowhere to be found, and they will still slice through Krim. So 9Z survive what could have been an atrocious situation. Damn, that's such an excellent round, man. I mean, they were really surrounded, and Roy, it's still a 1v2. They can run downstairs. Roy will probably try to beat him there. He's got a chance. He does have a chance. He has half armor as well. Oh, he's got a chance. And if he NPC swings that door, and, and the player with health plants bomb. Oh, my, oh God. my lord. Woo! 21 health left combined, but 21 health is more than they need. Yeah. 9Z take their 12. Yeah, that's that's all that matters. That was super solid. A little bit scary, of course. I think it was more, more about Fnatic playing that well for what they had. But then 9Z not overcommitting in the wrong position. Once they got this kill, it seemed like they were going to try to take it up to heaven. But instead, they made sure everything was cool in the ramp. They noticed that Nikodaz was the rotator to ramp. They didn't find anybody hiding, and Krims waited so long. He must have been so surprised when they were still holding onto those angles. But that is a real high level of focus there from 9Z. Yeah. Considering every possibility. Yeah, you've got to respect that. Roy had just been a second sooner as well. Hands would have been busy. Who knows what comes of that, but now we sit back as 9Z are about to churn through unarmored pistols. Nice nade damage at the very least, but Buddha's gonna chuck one back the other way. DGT just tears up that A site. We've got majority of players here from 9Z taking damage. Crims will come through with a singular USP frag, but that's all good. A site plant. This one's locked in from 9Z. It's going to be a substantial eight-round lead. Three away from pushing this to Overpass. Yep, they're in a really good spot. Overpass is an interesting map to end on. 9Z got to be feeling good. This is the first real rifle round, though, from Fnatic. And so this is obviously, you know, if they lose this, they don't have enough money for a full buy. 9Z just have an open route to victory just like that. So one super solid rifle round here and it could spell the end for Fnatic on a map that they wanted to take it to after already being able to ban out Dust2 and 9Z's kind of best map and favorite map to play. 9Z forced to show depth in their nuke play. Never did feel like this would be a freebie. The Crims, oh, awkward, awkward, still comes up with one and a ton of damage into NQZ. Double Molotov goes out. Nobody gonna peek behind that. DGT and Max sitting and waiting and doing their own thing. Vasher floats inside A, but ramp is really the problem. I think they have uh, outside locked off with this back mini player. And uh, Nikodaz just happened to take a fight. He's gonna watch him leave, but he knows that they haven't crossed. So Roy doesn't have to get too worried about ramp. There is the chance that they go downstairs, and that's the one threat. Secret is not open right now, so the vent rotation is the only one for the CT side. Ooh. And now they're starting to walk down. Again, the patience from 9Z, but look at Mezzi waiting beneath. Two players go up, both the Hell players up into heaven. They're clearing out the A site as DGT looks to go join his teammates. Mezzi's gonna hear this, sees it, and deals with the first one. In fact, goes in for seconds, and Buddha's dropped. We got close up on Max. Nice play. At least gets the trade back. He can focus over towards the decon door. We've got 25 seconds, and he needs to grab Bomb, but DGT just got another kill. Are they going and that, that opens up the possibility Ooh, of a lead. That's not an easy rotation back, but they, they get up the vent, I think, fast with one. Fasher waiting for heaven. He's so quick to the jump. Oh, this is the last five seconds. Fasher, he's gonna get the headshot to DGT. Max needs the clutch, gets one, but Nika does. He's right there with the off. Back and forth, a tug of war. Fnatic with at least a lifeline. It can be, be very easy to forget about that potential rotation back upstairs. It doesn't happen very often. So Fasher going up the vent quickly is something to note for sure. Just in case, Mezzi played this so well. That passive angle looked like he wasn't going to get anything. You know, if they say literally jump through the window, but waiting for it to break before he peeked, netted him that frag, and from there on out, it was pretty easy. Now, quite a costly round on the CT side, but money left over for 9Z to put yeah. together a buy, so they kind of keep the same thread hanging over above Fnatic like a dark cloud, that if they win this round again, they've got a dead broke Fnatic and a free match point. Also able to save all four of their tack timeouts for this T side. It's going to give Zach the most amount 
of time to try and offer assistance to Man. the 9Z camp. Yeah, look at all the kills they got. It, it results in a UMP here for Crims, who was holding onto the ramp with his life with an M4. Mezzi, who got the two kills with an M4, is now on a FAMAS. And Fasher himself also only has oh. an MP9, but Nikada is the best gun of the round. He saw a player silo, Ooh. catches Buddha on top of Mini, goes for the re-peak, and it's 9Z to come in with a kill. Oh, he pushed ramp and found a timing. Crims. Ooh, oh, man. my God, he didn't spot that. Jesus, but he gets trophy room. And at least in the meanwhile, NQZ also gets called outside. So Fnatic, deep control and three kills. He's calling a timing on the on ramp where there's no one actually there. So this might hold him in place for a little bit. Can they break into the A site, though? Yeah, it's the only Hail Mary 9Z really have. Roy's still here holding for lurks because of that timing that Crims called that's not actually there. So it actually, you'd think, pulls a player off of A. Roy otherwise could have been up in heaven. Lots of pressure on Mezzi. Again, suffering from only having this FAMAS. If he drops the ball here, oh. there's still a chance. 9Z with a live wire. Gunning for a 14th in the post plant. Crims's position, still unknown. And he could just slide up and shoot DGT in the back of the head. Nice and easy goes that one. It's Max now. Any kill Max gets here affects this next round and keeps the chances alive, even if it might seem like he can't win this. Oh, double molly, though. I mean, that's the shoe in That's the lockout. Crims, it's a 10-second stick, and he's going to do that so comfortably. Max just has to walk away. No additional kill, mm. but it is a bit of more money for 9Z. And, of course, it's only the seventh for Fnatic. Still a meter stick between the two teams. Yeah, the trophy room push was the big one, I think, that, like, was the final nail. Even, even though it created that question on ramp, still good, still worth it. Yeah, it locked up Roy outside and put lots of pressure on Mezzi to get a kill where he didn't. So that's the only reason we even see the bomb go down. But he was the full flank at the end of the day. And the full flank wins it yeah. right here. Crims couldn't have been easier. Mind you, DGT was just coming back to check. So timing plays out to Crims' favor. Smoke goes down on ramp. And DGT will stay pressed against it. We've got, of course, pistols here for 9Z. Not a full-fledged buy. Limitations, sure enough, but at least they add one more AK and Kevlar to what was saved. Shouldn't say impossible round for 9Z. Damn, DGT 19 and 9. Great map so far. Ooh, Crims with a chance at the aforementioned DGT. Leading the charge for the South Americans. And it's going to be Buddha who gets fed to the meat grinder. Tech 9 out at the helm of this push. Three players behind him inside of lobby. And Max is the X Factor. If they keep these CTs busy and they find that right timing, now they have a very real chance. Tech 9 comes in big. Mezzi's gonna get swarmed and he only gets two. Crimson oh. double from above and Buddha. Well, he's got a smoke to work with. He's got a chance with this one. And he's not known to be the heavy hitter. But goddamn, if this clutch wouldn't be felt by Fnatic. They're going to give him space to back up as well. He's got a one-way here sitting on the site. He's worried about Mini. He's worried about everything, looking at HUD as well. Trading pieces, Flash goes first. Buddha up with the first, sees the next. Tech 9 tap, further damage. And oh, it's desperate, but he just hides in, slides down as Nikodaz reloads fresh, and there we have it. A Ooh. singular survivor for Fnatic. Oh, forced to reload. If he wasn't, of course, he could have really played with Nikodaz up there in heaven and made his life hell. Man, that was... A trying moment. Nice lurk from Max to get that kill in upper, and his team were so ready to explode. They looked better than Fnatic when they had full guns trying to hit the upper side. Really kept the pressure up with full credit to Crims. The fast rotation up into heaven. The 2K for Mezzi as well. Man, have to feel for Buddha, right? He gets that first, he gets in with the Tech 9. Once once that first M4 kill is his and he runs out of ammo, his Tech 9 has two bullets. Yeah. Both his guns are empty. Yeah, it's tough. If he didn't have to reload there, for sure he takes a much more confident fight. Instead, Nikodaz is able to close that distance and close the hopes of 9Z's early 14th, but DGT's downstairs already, yeah, that's a quick, quick as can be, onto Decon. Yeah, now of course, you know, everything is closed downstairs, but that's not the point of this lurk. It's to get oh, Fnatic rims. to get worried on the ramp. The Big flash moment. three dodges. Wow, that's so nice. Two, three, easy for Crims. Just rock solid, statuesque inside the ramp room. And where does DGT get his kill, however? 
He's looking for another fight as NQZ works into the ramp. Nikodas has him locked off in this position. We'll see if he goes any farther. He doesn't really need to because he's just on the CD side. Oh. But ooh, NQZ comes out, bomb gets dropped. DGT alone. If only. If only NQZ can slide into the cover. If only that second peak from hell isn't as sharp as it is. And DGT, you may have the time, but he's about to get peaked and dealt with. Nikodos finds that ninth for Fnatic. We always said the T side was the question. And right now, 9Z have had a couple chances, but Fnatic's closing that gap. Yeah, I mean, both teams, like, on their T sides, they brought some really good rounds to the table. Almost closed them out, but didn't. This flash dodge, so underrated from Crims, does such a good job of getting back into vision just in time as they're coming through from being smoke blind. Shredded. Yeah, puts him down. Easy. Doesn't break a sweat. Having a much better day this time around. Yeah, yesterday was rough. It was. That Mirage map versus Outsiders really kind of put a dent in Crims. Yeah, that could kill your confidence if you weren't a legend. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that, you know, prior to the stage of the event starting, doing interviews with you even, is just talking about, you know, what he's telling his teammates, how he's fueling them with confidence, the tips and tricks of how to succeed at majors. You know, Crim's got all that in his repertoire. Even if the crowd is against you, people don't know when he was on the best Swedish team in the game, he was, they, their team was hated. There was so much beat between them and NIP who were the most popular, and he was still able to close out tournaments, have big games, and perform despite not having fans in the audience. So you'd think that's so valuable, but here's another quick one. Buddha looking to crack the whip into the A site. They'll flood out from Hut, but two dead already. And the others just can't quite come through. USP out from Roy gets weird. NQZ was given a chance there. Would have been a beautiful upgrade for a gun. Outside belongs to 9Z, but what can he really offer? There's a player up in heaven, and David's died in the meantime. Mm. So 9Z, I love the fact they just kind of go pedal to the metal, burst into that A site, but they don't have the tools for the job nor the entries. Yep, then he kills if they can find him at this point, but it's not going to be too easy. DGT readying his swing, and it's a good one. Hang on now. NQZ spot. Oh, Messi with the drive-by. <laughs> definitely just started clicking. <laughs> just smokes him on the side of the doorway, and that's going to force NQZ's hand. If he thought maybe somebody would come back out, check out doors, he could shoot him in the feet, but instead through the chest, it's Nick and Dawes is off, and a tenth now for Fnatic. Yeah, now they're starting to float, of course. Now it doesn't feel like any one round matters too much here for 9Z. They want to streak and they are letting the money build up a little bit. I will say 9Z did a better job in their CT side of keeping their money extremely high. Yes. Um, and I, I think that's, that, that that could matter. That could matter for sure. Fnatic don't have a big enough bank, then yep. they're still always under threat. So the little bit of damage that 9Z are doing on these eco rounds, nearly winning one straight up by getting four kills, all of that could have a knock-on effect. Only eight rounds won by T sides so far in this map, six of them by way of pistol round and the conversions. That is all. The two anomalies for Fnatic across their half come in the last three rounds. So goddamn, is it ever close. And Fasher gets even closer, just stuffs Buddha as they're trying to set up for what looks like another A hit. They are gonna press out towards Ven. They're kind of getting scrambled, oh, double knife! Dead. Nikodos, oh, and the off shot! just absolutely shreds them to pieces. Oh. Limbs sailing down through vents as the hopes of 9Z deflate. This was the full buy they waited for. Oh, that's the call out right and there. And they get nothing. They waited so much time for any kind of vent drop to take place, and Nikodaz is sitting there with his knife in hand like it's a pug. That's brutal. And I, we were just talking about the bank. That's three grand right there, there made from those knives as well. There it is. Up to 7.7K now. A nice little buffer for Fnatic. And not to mention a kick in the nuts. 9Z, you just got double knifed inside a vent by the shredder. Yeah. Wow. And now this game is uncomfortably close. Uncomfortably close. Not only that, but the full rifle idea is totally called out. A hut push comes in and they shove right on the player who's readying his flash for the pop, which is a huge telegraph, and then the players come out of the vent. They can't kill Fasher. He's even able to escape, get around to Tetris, put some more damage in. And 9Z are trying to live in the animosity zone, trying to keep the pressure going at all times so that they can create chaos and confuse Fnatic, but Fnatic are also able to keep up in those moments, and their composure is what's really, I think, making the difference now. So two-round game. It was a 5-10 half with a pistol to 9Z. 
We're seeing history repeat, it, repeat itself in the second half. Oh my god, after he sees him leave, he just pulls what? out his knife after. Oh, Jesus, to do Lord. that in this moment is insane. Just stuffing him. Fun Counter-Strike back, of course. If you knife someone in the legs, they die instantly. He's uh, essentially the bathtub plug. Vince a clogged. less cool nickname than the Shredder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. yeah, yeah, you're right. We'll stick with the first but one. But funnier. Dawn can use that. Fasher. Ooh, saw that right before he got blinded. Fasher still able to recover. Menzies in the open. This one's so quick. But Roy slides through. And as fast as 9Z hit this A site, they all hit the ground. But NQZ, oh god, he's out here. He's wrapping around the silo. CT doesn't see him, so that one's the freebie. Bomb can be retrieved. The next fight's low HP, and that's if he chooses to go mini. This would be the most godlike clutch, and Crims oh is God. busy on the ladder. But now he's in position, and that's what's gonna save him. Crims, oh God, what could have been another ladder kill? Yeah, he went into a safer spot, but there was a timing, and NTZ was really working. He was thinking, how do I get a kill before I get this bomb down? It was definitely the right idea, but the timing didn't work to his favor. Seven rounds straight for Fnatic. And that was a, was that a full buy? They had a couple of guns, but it looks like they have a little bit too much money now, so maybe they didn't invest fully. I'm not sure if they spend all of it here and will relive this Roy 3K spray down. Three different targets, all very far apart. Actually beautiful by him. Nice, man. Just a rotating turret. Right in the middle of an age crisis. Still putting up numbers. Still enough, of course. Yeah, that round is very different with all th well, without all three of those frags mm -hmm. from Roy. Bomb could have gone down. Heaven player was exposed in the open. But it feels like throughout this half, it's going to be a lot of could have been. Fanatic will take that because the lead has evaporated. Wall of smokes goes down. Spray off the mark. That's the cross. Max, oh, he does get tagged. Down to a quarter HP. Yeah, We've got Fasher already in position. Max is always bloody. He lives in the scrappy zone, so I think he would happily take that damage on his shoulders if it doesn't mean his teammate has to go through it. But as a rifler, it will definitely limit his impact. Full on lobby default as they chill, but Fnatic also chill. Nothing Fasher. crazy coming out of them. And he changed spots. Was Decon now towards double? He's got two players here, and he is on his own. Molly's going to come down to the stairs, so Gives this reaction it means you can go up to Xanteris and just chill for a second, but it'll call a CT down. This is a slight win for N9Z, but it's also very standard protocols here for the CT side. Man, could they go back up vent and split that A site? Yeah, it looks like that's actually the plan. Sitting in the lobby still with majority. We've got movement on the Fnatic front. Mezzi's still locked in sight. Nade's looking for a target. It's negligible damage. Oh, but Roy, he catches them as they come up that ladder. So now they understand exactly what is up. Mezzi waiting for the fight. Catches one back by Vent. There's no answer back yet from 9Z. Roy supported by Crims. And Nikodaz, now he's the one that looks to come back up from Vent yet again. But he gets tagged, sent back down. Bomb planted, and we need the retake from Fnatic or else 9Z's T side finally breaks through. Oh, this is not too bad here for 9Z. To keep their lead, to hang on to their hopes. David's deep inside of the squeaky door. NQZ is going to face from front sight. He catches Roy right away, and Crims has got the trade. Now, the backside player doesn't budge. He's waiting for somebody to come in from heaven, but there's nobody there, in fact. And we've got this lobby lurk. Oh, but a back turn, and David's deep position goes big. A double kill that sends Nikodaz away to the save. 9Z have found 14. Wow, they do it, and it's actually so well fought through. There's no luck involved here. They got Fasher to rotate back into the site with the one stairs molly. That should be standard, but because he has to rotate in there, he has to ask for help as well from in the form of a ramp player. They decide to turn this into an upper hit. No one invented to stop him. And they combine and hit their entries, most importantly, in a very solid post plant. You can see they each catch one off guard. It was still losable because they were down in numbers. And that's why they reciprocate with the energy at the, after the round win. They know they could have lost it. 9Z. They figured out a way into this game. It's late, but they still maintain the lead. That was the tie for Fnatic. But with the 
sheer amount of rounds that Fnatic have won. They still have money for everything that they need. And they themselves, if they're smart, they're not going to think too hard about what went wrong there. Took Fnatic nine rounds to break through 9Z's defense, took 9Z only seven. But there was nothing gimmicky about the call. So 9Z, if they can get secret control like that, they can organize into a split in that exact fashion, and they can trust their entries like they just did. How sick. And they can, they actually pulled together a sustainable round. It wasn't some random upper explode on Tech 9. Dude, Nikodaz could be the playmaker here. Or just the target of what is an onslaught from 9Z. Four players finds the first, and these angles are so good for an Auber. There's three separate fallbacks. You take one every step of the way, and that pack of players from 9Z smothered. The first one comes for free. Ooh, they're gonna run into him. He's getting aggressive. Max posted, Ooh. but Nika does, and he's ready. He wants more. The bloodlust is real, but he knows better. He'll put fire on the floor and let Roy instead pick up the reins. Sure enough, Finding Buddha on the cross, seeing the shadow of bodies as he taps away. It's the headshot to NQZ, and it's 13 Fnatic right back to winning ways. Yeah, they're still just right behind them. That's a very clean round. In immediate response to what they saw last time as the problem. Thatcher spotting from the stairs. Yeah, that's tough when you have to fall back into the site. What if you have Nikodaz in that spot and they try something similar? 9Z, they didn't copy and paste the same round, but the same starting idea in the default. Get secret control and do it with multiple players, but they weren't ready oh, for an off. Who's that? Oh in the middle. my god, it's fallen right in the middle of things. The heart of Brazil. Wow, let's go. You love to see that. Absolute legend of the game. There's no better person to be out here in the crowd right now. Soaking up the energy. That's just beautiful. I see a mask in his hand. How, how long has he been out there? I don't know. The grand reveal. There it is. But back to what really matters. Nika Dawes down in the secret, dude. Oh, Max had the advantage. He kind of did. He kind of did. Gets he, a couple shots he in at least. He got a couple of shots. Yeah, it's hard to know if he could have seen his head. Mm. And it would have had to hit a really, really clean one. It's possible. But look where it's left them, Lauders. Yeah, they're on to three Tech Nines. They didn't spend all their money here. Nope. They know that they can still defend against match point. So this could very easily go to round 30. It's a curbed buy for a curbed enthusiasm. 9Z. That one round win probably felt so damn good, but the jolt of success comes to an abrupt end. Really been able to rely on Crims to anchor inside the ramp, but they can feel new. that it's coming this direction anyways. All presence ready. Ooh. Max, nice tech nine kill. So fast, in fact, that it sends Nikodaz downstairs. And that gun that gets picked up is replaced by DGT. This is control of the map and also some weapons. And they know that the upper had to rotate down. <gasps> he comes back up, Nikodaz. The balls on Nikodaz. The absolute audacity to make that re-aggression with the help of a smoke. Bolster. He's got a teammate just behind him. Yep, but loses Fasher. And this corner, oh, oh it's occupied and dealt with. Nikodaz strikes gold as he comes back up from beneath. And DGT, my friend, what can you master? He has to work. He has to think here. Of course, the bomb and turnpike with his position and known after getting two kills makes this a near impossible oh. task. But with the amount of health left over, now they know. A little bit of utility. If he gets a jiggle off, maybe he gets Here an we opportunity. Go. He's got them split up at the moment. Nikodaz, oh. open, but he hits another shot. Nikodaz, four kills on the round. The reaggression back up the ramp at the start and the end of that play. Heavy hitting off from Denmark. Quiet maps across the stage, but a new look on ramp control, and one that doesn't shy away, at least not for just more than three seconds. Comes right back into the action, catches the tail end of 9Z as they try to follow through. 30 round game for the last spot in the legend stage. 9Z pushed to their limits, but at least now, oh, oh. back with a buy and straight into success, Krim slaughtered. They try to do something aggressive with him for the first time here inside of the ramp and make him instantly regret it. He said, let me show you old Fnatic. And gets bodied by DGT, who came through in that clutch and gave it his best shot, two kills for him. Oh, Nate's big Buddha. 
Tough spot with the 57 health. Nikodaz has been everywhere. This guy is so incredibly mobile. And now he's got a little bit to offer as Buddha gets finished off. The repeat punished by David. What? They're feeding Nikodaz from the back of that vent. He offers up a doozy. And now it's going to be the next player just waiting. DGT so timid, and yet he comes in. Mezzi trades that back, and as the bomb hits the ground, Max Hearts sinks. He needs to slide through, but it's being watched. And Mezzi, he tucks it back on Vent. He waits, and it's a clean headshot from Max. Sees one up in heaven. Roy strikes, and it's Fnatic on 15 oh, first. Oh, that's it. They are so close to the podium now. Fnatic, they can feel it. They've done the hard part. They know there's a little bit of money here for 9Z, but it's not going to be the best buy ever. That was 9Z's best chance for sure. And Nikodaz, he's been persistent, he's been pervasive, he's been accurate. He knows when to be passive, how to be aggressive. He's hitting shots like Shiro was hitting all challenger stage, but doing it on a different roster. Op dominance, get back in fast, folks. This one's looking like A, and Fasher already kicks it off. Four three five as they try to press in, looking to keep that hope. But Mezzi sits on top, and Fasher's not missing. Every single kill towards Squeaky. It's nothing but the hunt push, and Fnatic, it's just the one kill left.